Today is Vesak, the Buddha's day. Traditionally, Buddhists mark this day to reflect on his life and especially on three main points his birth, awakening, and passing away. His birth is joyfully remembered with exclamations such as the awakened one arose in the world, brought light to the world, proclaimed the Dhamma, the truth, leading to stillness of distress. Darkness is state where we wander confused, lost and afraid. And we want to see, we seek for the light. But what is it? One of the Buddha's own disciple once said, there are four sources of light in the world, a fifth one not found here. We have sun, which shines by day, and the moon, that glows at night. And there is a fire that flares up here and there, both day and at night. But the Buddha is the best of those that shine. He is the light unsurpassed. It is good to remember and celebrate that. But the light that is celebrated as the Sutta says, is not of this world. We cannot see it with our own eyes or experience with any other sense or thought. We cannot feel it. It is not there. While devotionally aiming to look for the light in the things over there, we might not realize that by doing that, we actually turn our back towards it. No matter how much we yearn, hope and pray for ideas, images and objects, we would at best swing between those and other ideas, images and objects. We end up being lost in the cycle in samsara, roaming in the dark. This wandering in darkness is especially evident today. An epidemic virus widely disclosed how confused the world is. There is actually nothing new about it, but today we feel it stronger. We keep looking for the light on the matter, seeking for information, facts, but we just cannot get free from doubt, but end up repairing loose ends like we would patch a tomato. That kind of patching is endless and destructive. Distress doesn't mean just momentary sharp pain in our chest, but distress is darkness and everything else that is dependent upon it. If you feel affected by events, Having doubts, feeling lost, that means we are walking in the dark. When the Buddha realized the truth, he awakened. The internal eye opened. Then he saw the light. Then he knew. And the light was not over there, not in things. It even doesn't look like the light as would be seen by the fleshy eye. The light is behind our point of view, when it is recognized as a point of view. The Buddha said, with undertaking the right view, people can transcend all pain and distress. And the third event of the Buddha's life that we use for today's reflection is also his passing away. It is good to keep that in our minds too. Nobody is spared from death. Whatever comes together, we fall apart. Death is here with us in this darkness, and we fear it. Fear it because we believe we are losing something. With the rising of the light, we will see that the body has never been ours, and holding to it brings nothing good, only pain. When we see that, we immediately drop it. We drop it before it is taken away. We letting go of ownership, we let go of death. The Buddha knew what death is. That's why he was freed and no longer afraid. This is the deathless. This is the light. We cannot gather together today for the Vesak. The beautiful thing is that you were never asked to do so. The truth is not among people. It is not there. The fact is, the Buddha chose solitary abiding under a tree, in a forest, or in an empty hut, where birds can be heard, not celebratory gatherings. The world cannot give you the light, but the Buddha brought the light, 
and we can be awakened by our own effort. Therefore, let's celebrate Vesak not by seeing the light outside, but within our own minds.